Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our monthly web workshop on Fluke Connect. Today's topic is frequently asked questions. I will review the top 10 most frequently asked questions we receive in the technical support department. My name is Sean Carta. I am a tier three technical support engineer and the Fluke lead. So a few housekeeping items before I begin the presentation. Phones will be muted during the entire presentation. Feel free to type questions into the question section of your screen at any time. Please limit your questions to the topic of today's session. Questions will be answered at the end of the presentation. And this session will be recorded and uploaded to our Fluke Connect website in the next few days. I'll show you the link on where to access that recording and many others at the end of today's presentation. Here's our agenda for today. I'll start with the Fluke Connect overview to provide you with a high level explanation of the Fluke Connect software. Then I will review the top 10 most frequently asked questions and provide answers, of course. And finally, I will answer any questions from the audience today. Our first section is a high level overview of Fluke Connect. I just want to cover a few basic facts about Fluke Connect for anyone that may be new to the software. Fluke Connect works with over 80 different tools in 11 different categories, including digital multimeters, clamp meters, installation testers, vibration meters, scope meters, process meters, insulation testers, infrared cameras, power loggers, and power quality monitors. The easiest way to tell if a tool will work with the Fluke Connect software is if it has the letters FC in the model name. So the 376 FC clamp meter, 1664 FC installation tester, and T3000 FC temperature module all would be Fluke Connect enabled. The only exception is the Fluke suite of thermal image cameras. Most of them do work with Fluke Connect, but do not include the FC in the model name. And Fluke Connect is available in over 73 different countries. One other important note, the Fluke Connect measurement software is 100% free. So please give it a try if you haven't already. Here's an overall flow of how the data is stored and moved through the various systems. So in step number one, Let's say you have an intermittent motor blower or intermittent blower motor problem with a rooftop HVAC package unit. So in step number two, you grab your 376 FC clamp meter to help diagnose the issue and you connect it to the blower motor. In step number three, the 376 FC tool communicates the readings to the Fluke Connect mobile app via a Bluetooth connection. Then in step number four, the Fluke Connect mobile app will upload the readings to the Fluke Connect cloud where they are permanently stored. Now, if the cell phone is out of range, the data will be stored on the phone until it reconnects to either a cell signal or a Wi-Fi signal, at which time the data will be uploaded to the Fluke Connect cloud. And finally, in step number five, users can then access their Fluke Connect data in the cloud via any web-enabled device, such as a web browser, the mobile app, or our desktop software. So as I just noted on at the end of the previous slide, the Fluke Connect software works in three different applications. The Fluke Connect mobile app, and this is the key interface for capturing measurements from the tools. The Fluke Connect web app, and this is where you go to create assets, asset groups, and perform analysis. And finally, the Fluke Connect desktop app. And this is the key interface for downloading thermal images and creating thermal image reports. It also is where you go to download and create reports for acoustic images. The next thing that is important for you to know is that the Fluke Connect software comes in three different tiers. 
This is often one of the more confusing aspects of the Fluke Connect software. So here's a quick overview. The first tier or the bottom tier is the Fluke Connect measurements tier. This tier is available to all users for free. And this is the tier that enables users to capture measurements from their tools and save the data to the cloud, just like I explained on one of the previous slides. The second tier or the middle tier is the Fluke Connect assets tier. This comes with one year free trial for users and is $250 per license per person after that. Now, this tier includes all of the features available in the Fluke Connect measurements tier, plus asset management, asset health tracking, and work order management. And the third or final tier or top tier is the Fluke Connect condition monitoring tier. This tier includes the first year of the software subscription and the purchase of a sensor or hardware. And this tier will include all of the features available in the Fluke Connect measurements tier and all of the features available in the Fluke Connect assets tier. All right, that concludes the overview portion of the presentation. The next section is the Fluke Connect Frequently Asked Question section, where I will provide you with some of our most frequently asked questions and answers. So here are the top 10 most frequently asked questions I hear in the technical support department. I will go through them one by one to provide you with answers. So number one, when do we use which software? I covered that a bit a moment ago, but we'll go in a little more depth in, in a moment. Question number two, how do I configure all of my temperature settings? There's a hint right there in the question. There's multiple locations where you need to configure your temperature settings. Question number three, what is the Bluetooth pin code to connect my tool? Question number four, how do I log data with my Fluke Connect tool? There are three different options and I'll show you each of those three along with the pros and cons. Question number five, why can't my teammate see my measurements? Question number six, how do I sign another team administrator? This is a question we often get after the first team administrator has left the company. Um, question number seven, how do I change the default file path in the Fluke Connect desktop software? Question number eight, why is Fluke Connect desktop not working? Question number nine, when will my free one year Fluke Connect assets license expire? And finally, question number 10, where can I get more help with the tool or the hardware? So our first question, question number one, when do I use which software? This can be a confusing one because there are three different types of Fluke Connect software. So it's hard to know when to use which one. And while I briefly covered this information in the Fluke Connect overview section that I just presented, here's a lot more detail on each of the different applications. So the first application is the Fluke Connect mobile app. This is the key interface for capturing measurements from the tools and where you will always start because other than thermal images, there's no other way to capture measurement readings from your tools and upload them to the Fluke Connect cloud. So just keep in mind, you will always start with a mobile app. Depending on the type of tool you have, you will either use Bluetooth or Wi-Fi to connect your cell phone to the Fluke tool. Clamp meters like the 368FC, 369FC, and the 902FC, digital multimeters like the 279FC, and installation testers like the 1664FC, and insulation testers like the 1587FC, all use Bluetooth to connect to your Fluke Connect mobile app. In fact, most of the 80 supported Fluke Connect enabled tools we have use a Bluetooth type connection. There are a couple of exceptions. Power loggers like the 1732 FC and the 1742 FC and thermal imagers all use a Wi-Fi connection to connect to the Fluke Connect mobile app. Next, we've got the Fluke Connect web app. And as you can see here, this is where you go after you have used the mobile app to capture the measurement readings or thermal images. This is where you go to analyze the data that you've captured on your mobile app. Why do analysis here? Because it's much easier to see the information on your PC than it is to see on your cell phone. This is also where you should go to create assets, asset groups, asset subgroups. You can also import assets from an Excel spreadsheet into our web app. 
Why create assets here? Well, because again, it's just much easier to type up that information on a computer than it would be on your cell phone. This is also where you go to manage your team. Want to invite a new team member to join your team? You can do that here. Want to add a second team administrator? Do that here. Now, can you do most of these things in the mobile app? Absolutely, yes, but it's just much easier to do them from a PC, so we recommend using the web app. And third, and uh, last but not least, the Fluke Connect desktop app. This is the key interface for downloading thermal images and creating thermal image reports, and it's also where you go to download acoustic images and create basic acoustic reports. Why use the desktop app? Well, if you're working with thermal images, it's the best place to edit and save your images and create reports. Now, can you do that on the mobile app? Let's say you're out in the field somewhere and you don't have access to your computer. Absolutely, you can edit your thermal images and save them and create a quick uh, basic report, basic thermal image report on the mobile app. But it's best to do that type of thing on the desktop app if you have access. Now. But if you don't work with thermal images at all and you don't have an acoustic imager, well, then you don't need to worry about this app because it's primarily used for thermal images and acoustic images. So you don't even need to install the software. One less app to worry about. Question number two, how do I configure all my temperature settings? Well, first, it's important to note that there are four places that you need to do this. You need to do this in the mobile app, the web app, the desktop app, if you're using it, and the actual tool or hardware. So here you can see the setting options for each app. In the mobile app, you can see that we're um, looking at the settings options, and here we can see the temperature unit, Celsius or Fahrenheit. On the web app, we're also looking at the settings option. We can see the temperature options available or temperature unit settings, Celsius or Fahrenheit. And on the desktop app, we're looking at desktop settings and temperature unit of Fahrenheit or Celsius. Additionally, you must also set the default temperature in all the tools as well. Any tool that has a temperature reading, like a thermal imager, the Fluke 279 FC True RMS Thermal Multimeter that you see here, or the T3000 temperature module, must have the temperature unit default set there as well. So we will start with setting the default temperature setting in the mobile app, because this is, again, where you will always start in order to capture measurements. So go to the Fluke Connect mobile app on your phone, log into the Fluke Connect um, account, your Fluke Connect account, and then tap the three lines in the upper left-hand corner. This will provide you with access to the main menu, which you see here. Now, in order to access the setting options, you'll need to scroll down below where it says report. So scroll down to the bottom, select the option that says settings, and here in the middle of the page, you'll see the option for temperature unit where you can select Celsius or Fahrenheit. Next up, the web app. So go to flukeconnect.com, the Fluke Connect website, flukeconnect.com, log in to your Fluke Connect account, click on the profile icon, which is this little um, shadow figure up here in the upper right-hand corner, select the option that says settings, and the only option on the page is the temperature unit. So you'll select Celsius or Fahrenheit. Next up is the desktop app. Go to the Fluke Connect desktop app, double click to launch the software, log into your Fluke Connect account, click on the profile icon, uh, the little shadow figure here in the upper right-hand corner, select the options that says settings. Be sure you're under the desktop setting option where you will find temperature unit and you can select either Celsius or Fahrenheit. You can see it's very simple and straightforward, but selecting the temperature setting needs to be done in each app. The good news is that once you do this and it's saved, it's done. You don't need to revisit this. So just take a moment to go in, select the proper temperature setting on all three of your apps, Fluke Connect apps, and you're good to go. Next up are the tools. Setting the default temperature will be different for each tool. It's going to vary between each thermal image camera, between the 279 FC True Multimeter. So um, what I did is instead of giving directions to each one of the different temperature tools, I said, 
I would give you instructions on how to find that information for yourself. So you would go to the fluke.com website, search on the tool model. So in this case, we're looking at the 279 FC. So you would just enter in the number 279. So in the search bar, type in 279, click the magnifying glass, and then it will give you some options, different product page options. Select the product page, click on the resources tab, click on the manuals link, select the user manual, and then in the user manual, search for settings. And there you'll be able to see where you can go in to set the temperature unit, whether it's Celsius or Fahrenheit. So here I went to the user manual for the 279 FC, and I selected the settings menu section of the user manual. It tells me that this is where that information is, and this is it tells me how to set the, the temperature setting. Okay, moving on, question number three, what is the Bluetooth pin code to connect my tool? We hear this question a lot. What it means is that you are trying to connect your tool directly to your phone without using the Fluke Connect mobile app, which is the wrong way to do it. It won't work. Um, you actually need to use the Fluke Connect mobile app to create the connection between the, the cell phone and the tool itself. So this is a, a chart I created to show the three main steps of connecting your tool to the Fluke Connect mobile app. The first step is to pick up your phone, open up the Fluke Connect mobile app, and log into the Fluke Connect mobile app, and you'll see the home screen here. Then set your phone down, and then go to your tool. Pick up your tool and turn it on, and press the Fluke Connect button on the tool to turn on the Bluetooth functionality. Then you'll want to verify the Fluke Connect Bluetooth signal is broadcasting from the tool by checking the tool display for the Fluke fan icon. So in this case, we just spin the dial to turn on our tool, and then we press the Fluke Connect fan icon. It's going to have this particular logo on the button, no matter which tool you're using, and you want to press that button because it activates the Bluetooth signal from the tool. And here you can see on the tool display, there's a little fluke fan icon, so you know that it's actually broadcasting the Bluetooth signal. Next, you go back to your phone and the Fluke Connect mobile app, and you'll want to tap on the first option that says connect and capture measurements. And any tool that's within range that has that Bluetooth signal broadcasting will show up on your Fluke Connect mobile app. In this case, we have just the one. This is actually a button. It doesn't look quite like a button, but you can click on 376 FC and to connect. And once the connection is established, you'll be able to see on the Fluke Connect mobile app the same exact reading that's available in the tool. So here we've got a negative 0.4, and on the tool, it's also showing negative 0.4. Now from here, we can record readings in the app using the record button. We can save a reading in the app, a single snapshot in time. We can use our share live feature, which is basically like FaceTime for Fluke, um, which shows another user exactly what you're seeing on your screen, or you can download readings from the tool to the Fluke Connect mobile app. Now I will be showing you in a recording that I made how to connect your tool to the Fluke Connect mobile app. So here I'm turning on the tool, selecting the data that I want to measure. I'm pressing the Fluke Connect button, which will activate the Bluetooth signal. So here I've, I've pressed this button to activate the signal. And on the tool display, you can see at the very top, it's got the Fluke fan icon. So you can see that the Bluetooth functionality is actually turned on. If you're having problems connecting your tool to your Fluke Connect mobile app, it quite possibly is because this is not activated. So go ahead and check that. Next, I'll click Connect and Capture Measurements on the Fluke Connect mobile app. I'll select the tool I want to connect to, the 376FC. And you'll be able to see once connected, the data on the tool, 0 0.1, is visible on the Fluke Connect mobile app as well, 0 0.1. Now keep in mind, you'll be able to see the data in the Fluke Connect mobile app from the tool as long as the connection stays connected. So if you 
step out of range. Like if you put your phone in your pocket and walk down to the cafeteria or step outside, you're going to break that Bluetooth connection between the tool and the phone. So you won't be able to, to view that information anymore. But it's pretty straightforward once you see how it works. And the great news is, is that now you know how to connect one Bluetooth enabled Fluke tool. You pretty much know how to connect all Bluetooth enabled Fluke tools to the Fluke Connect mobile app because they all work the same way. Not that complicated once you see it in action. Okay, moving on. The next question is how do I log data with my Fluke Connect tool? We get a lot of questions about this in the technical support department. So I'm excited to share the different options you have available to you for data logging. There are really three different options available. Option one is data logging on the tool only, then connecting the tool to the Fluke Connect mobile app to download the log file. Option number two, it's very similar to option number one in that you're still logging data on the tool, but in this option, you'll connect the tool to the Fluke Connect mobile app before you log data on the tool so that you can also watch the log file or actively monitor the log file on your Fluke Connect mobile app. So, and option number three, it's not really exactly logging because you're not logging data on the tool, you're only logging data in the app. Here again, you would connect your tool to the Fluke Connect mobile app, but instead of using the tool logging option, you're going to use the in-app recording option available within the Fluke Connect mobile app. And this also enables you to view live logging. So pros and cons of each option. So option number one, you're logging data on the tool and then downloading it later into the Fluke Connect mobile app. Now the pros of this are that you can log for long periods of time. Um, in some cases, this can be up to say a 24 hour period. The length of time you can log is only limited to the amount of memory or space available on the tool and the battery life on the tool itself. Many tools can log up to 64,000 readings too. So depending upon how you set up the measurement interval, you can have a fairly long log file. Now, the con of this option is that does, it does not provide you with the ability to view the live logging. So you can't see what's going on on the tool itself. You can't see the logging. You can look at the tool to see the data that's being logged, but you can't actually view it from within the, the Fluke Connect app. And option number two, the pros for this are that um, it basically works the same as option number one, except prior to starting the logging option on the tool, you're connecting the tool to the Fluke Connect mobile app. So here again, you can log for long periods of time, as long as the tool has enough space and you have enough battery life on the tool. Um, but in addition to that, you can view live logging. Because you've connected your Fluke Connect mobile app to the tool, you have the ability to view what's going on. Now, the cons of this are that you must keep the phone near the tool to stay connected. So um, remember, it's a Bluetooth connection, so it's usually around 10 feet maximum. So if you move your phone further away than that from the tool, you're going to break that connection. And last but not least, um, option number three, here again, you can also view live logging, but again, you also need to keep the phone near the tool to stay connected. And this, because the data is being stored on your phone itself and not on the tool, only has a maximum recording time of 10 minutes. That is by design because if we used up any more than 10 minutes, it would take up a significant amount of space on your phone, which would prevent you from having photos or videos or music, et cetera, on your phone. So we set it to be 10 minute maximum so we didn't take up very much space on your phone. So now that we've got the three different logging options covered, let's take a closer look at option number one and how we do that. So in step number one, in order to start the logging option, we press the log button on the tool. Now in this case, we're looking at the 376 FC and the log option is actually the inrush button. If you look, there's some light gray text that says log two seconds, which means that if we press and hold the inrush button for two seconds, it will start the logging process. So we do that. Once we do that, we can see if the log has been activated by simply looking for the word log on the tool display. Here we can see that it is in logging mode. And here in the upper right hand corner, it says memory. This is the amount of space available on the tool itself. You can see that the bar is completely clear, which means that 
this probably doesn't have any data on it. If the bar was solid black, it would mean that the data is full. So you probably need to uh, clear this data before starting any new log files. So um, now once we've logged the, the data that we want to log, we can let this run for as long as we want, say, you know, two hours, three hours, 24 hours. We come back on the tool itself in order to stop the logging process. We press the log button again. It's a toggle on and off. And then in order to, to view the data on the tool itself, we connect the tool to the Fluke Connect mobile app, which we've covered in a couple of previous slides, and you click the download button here. It's like a little down carrot with an underline on it. You click on this, single click on this, and the data will download from the tool to the Fluke Connect mobile app. And this is what the next screen would look like. So from here, you would click the download button to continue with the download process. Um, quick, quick note here on the logging, you can set the interval. So right now, the default interval is set to one second, but you can change this to any other parameter that you want to change it to, to three seconds, five seconds, one minute. And the interval you select here will determine the length of recording available. So if you say you want to do one second and the tool can store 65,000 readings, you'll get 65,000 seconds worth of data. If you set it to one minute, you would get 65,000 minutes worth of data. You can also, if you wanted to, predetermine the length of the logging file. So if I wanted the log file to only run for three minutes or for 20 minutes or two hours, maybe I want it to stop in the middle of the night when I'm you know, at home in bed, I could set it to you know, run for six hours. I started off during the day and then set it to run for six hours. And here you can also see the amount of memory available on the tool. So as I stated earlier in the last screen, you saw on the tool display, the, the memory was almost empty and we can also see that validated here. So the file that we download is gonna be very small because there's not a lot stored on the tool. But we can proceed by clicking the download button here and then we just get a confirmation screen. Do we want to continue with the download, cancel or OK? We click the OK button and now we can see that the download is in progress. So in this case, the, the file is 68% complete. Another issue we hear from customers quite frequently is that um, the download doesn't complete because in order to download the entire file, you need to keep the phone next to the tool. Remember, it's like a maximum of 10 feet in order to keep that Bluetooth connection uh, connected. So if you pick up the phone and walk away, you know, to go to lunch or get a cup of coffee or something or go do another job, you're going to break the connection and interrupt the download. And what will happen is it's possible the data will, part of the data will get downloaded or the data that does get downloaded gets corrupted. So it's best to just leave your phone next to the tool and let the download process finish. If the memory is completely full, it can take, you know, half an hour to an hour to download all that data, depending upon how fast your connection is. Next, we're still we're still downloading data from the tool. Um, you'll see that you you'll get the download successful pop-up screen, and this is just to tell you that things worked. Or in, in in any other case, if it didn't work, it would let you know that as well. So you tap the OK button, and here is where you can see the file that we downloaded. This is the log file that we created. It's from a 376. It's date and time stamped. At this point, we can assign this data to an asset. Or if we're done downloading the information from the tool to the to the app, we can just click the done button. And last but not least, this is very important. It says clear memory. So what this does is this will delete the data from the 376. And this action cannot be undone. So this is going to wipe the tool's memory clean. So if you want to delete all of the data on the tool, let's say you've gone out to a site and you've done a job and you've collected all the data, um, you can go ahead and click the delete button. But if you haven't had a chance to go back into the app and verify all the data is there, I would click cancel because you want to save the data on the tool until you've had time to verify that it's been downloaded in the app. I have had customers call in who had wiped the, the data off of their tools and there's unfortunately no way for us to recover that data for, for them. So this is the second data logging option, logging on the tool while simultaneously viewing the log file in the Fluke Connect mobile app. So the steps are in a little bit of a different order for this, but basically it's still the same. Step number one, connect your tool to the Fluke Connect mobile app. 
So instead of waiting until after the logging is done, step number one here is to actually connect your tool to the Fluke Con Fluke Connect mobile app first, which I've already showed you how to do a couple of times. So second, the next thing we need to do is press the log button to start the logging on the tool. So just like before, we press this and hold it for two seconds to start the log. We verify that the log file is activated and it is. And in the Fluke Connect mobile app, we can see that here it says logging. So we know that that means the tool is in logging mode and we're actively logging. Now, we've got two different ways to view this data. If we select the numeric only view here, option A, then all we're going to see is this number. So the number on the tool will match the number in the app. If we choose option B, which is the graphing option, we'll not only see the numeric value, but we'll also see the graphing option. So you've got two different ways to view the data, numeric only or graphing. So step number four, once we're done logging, maybe we've let this run a couple of hours and we're done monitoring this, we go back to the tool, press the log button again to turn off the logging functionality. And finally, in step number five, you download the log file from the tool to the Fluke Connect mobile app. Now in this case, you'll notice that the down arrow looks like an eye. It, it's just what happens when you connect the tool to the Fluke Connect mobile app on some different tools. So you would just go ahead and click the eye icon and then the download process would proceed. And it's the same as what you saw previously here. It would follow all the same steps. Now this is our third data logging or recording option. Here's what the screens look like when you press the in-app recording button next to the number one. So here down at the very bottom, you've connected your tool to the Fluke Connect mobile app and you want to do a quick recording to capture just a, a minimum amount of data here, you can use the in-app option, press the little round record button, let it run for a maximum of 10 minutes, um, maybe you let it run for five minutes or so, then you can press the stop button, you'll notice the round red button converts to a red square button, press the stop button, and once you do that, then you can save the log file. This would be a view of the log file that you just created, at this point, you could assign this log file to an asset. You could assign it to a work order. You could add some notes or a vo voice note. You could share this via email to anyone inside or outside the company. So let's say in our earlier part of the presentation, we had that rooftop system that was having a problem. I could assign this particular reading to a work order and add a note, hey, Charlie, we're having a problem with the HVAC rooftop you know, blower motor, so please go check that out. And then um, once, you know, we assign that to a work order and that work order is assigned to Charlie, Charlie will be able to see this log file that we created in my note. Now, of course, to finish the whole process, you simply click the yellow done button in the upper right-hand corner. So now I will be showing you a recording that I made of how to use data logging option number one. That's logging on the tool, then downloading the data to the Fluke Connect mobile app. So here we have our 376 FC clamp meter again and our Fluke Connect mobile app. We turn on the tool, select the measurement we want to uh, record. We press and hold the inrush button just to activate the logging option on the tool. We can see that the log is displayed here, so we know it's working, and we have enough memory available on the tool to actually run a log file. Now at this point, we just you know, would let the log file run. So um, we could move on to, to working on some other jobs while our tool's connected and logging data. We could uh, go to lunch if we need to, or uh, run, you know, grab some more tools from the truck, whatever we need to do. But once we're done, we would press the log button again to stop the logging process. Next, we're going to um, turn on the Fluke Connect Bluetooth functionality on the tool by pressing on the little Fluke icon logo or this little button. You'll notice that on the tool display you can see the Fluke fan icon to indicate the tool is broadcasting a Bluetooth signal. Then we tap the connect we tap the connect and captures measurement button, tap the 376 button, and now 
we can see that the tools connected to the FluConnect mobile app because we're seeing the same reading on the tool as we are on the mobile app. And you'll see this little down arrow. This is how we can download the data from the tool to the FluConnect mobile app. So we press that down arrow. And this should look familiar. Um, here again, you can see there's very little data saved on the tool itself. This is where you set up the interval. So as I stated earlier, you can set it to one second, one minute, etc. You could also set the duration of the logging file. Now in our case, we're just going to download the data from the tool to the Flute Connect mobile app. So we'll click the download button. We see our confirmation screen, we click OK. We watch the download and let it progress. If there's a lot of data on the tool, this can take up to a half an hour to an hour, so be sure to leave the phone next to the tool to, to sustain that Bluetooth connection. In our case, it's a very short file, and there's very little data on the tool, so this is going to go quite quickly. Now we can see it's saving measurements. Download was successful. Good news, we click OK. We can see the file, the log file that we just downloaded with the date and timestamp. And we're done with the process, so we just click the Done button. And here's that, that warning message. Do we want to clear the memory on the tool? We can click Cancel or Delete. Now one other thing I want to show you, up at the very top, part of the screen, you'll see a black number in a yellow box. This is the number of measurements that are currently stored on the Fluke Connect mobile app on the cell phone. This is the, the number of measurements that need to be uploaded from the cell phone to the Fluke Connect cloud. So um, there's 15 different measurements and what you'll see is this, this uploading process will occur very quickly because these files are very small. In the case of, say, a thermal imaging file, that's a much larger file, so that's going to take a lot longer to upload. You want to be sure to wait until this process is complete before you log out of your Fluke Connect mobile app, otherwise you lose the data. The app will warn you if you click log out before data has been synced, it will warn you that you'll lose the data, so beware of that warning message. See how fast that goes? Pretty fast. And then we simply click the Done button because we're done with the process. We can go back to the app and look at the measurements to verify that the data we just downloaded is there in our app, and it is. There's the file, the log file we just downloaded. Okay, moving on to question number five. Why can't my teammates see my measurements or thermal images? Measurements or thermal images you take can only be viewed by you in your Fluke Connect account. And this is actually by design because I may work on one type of equipment like the chillers while my teammate works on boilers. So there's no need for me to see his readings or for him to see mine. Or I may work in one region while my teammate works in a different region. So again, there's no reason to see each other's measurements. However, there is a way you can share measurements or thermal images with teammates. You just must assign those measurements to an asset. Your teammate can then click on the asset and view the measurement or thermal image from the asset view. Let's take a look at what that looks like in the web app. So here we can see the entire team. This is the team tab, and these are the members of my team. I'm Riley Russell. This is my demo account. I'm designated as the administrator. I also have Mark Manning on my team and Travis Turner on my team. Now you can see that Mark Manning only has a measurement license. That means he does not have an assets license. So he cannot assign his measurements to assets because his assets trial has expired. But we have Travis who does have an assets license and he can assign measurements to assets. So um, I will show you what that looks like. Right now, as I stated, I'm in Riley Russell's account and I'm looking at the measurements tab. So I'm in Riley's account, 
on the measurements tab and you can see that I've taken a T3000FC uh, log file and I've also taken a T3000FC single measurement reading, a temperature reading. So the temperature reading was 78.8 degrees. I assigned that measurement reading to the asset group plant one and a specific asset called P1 chiller. So because I've assigned this measurement reading to an asset, that means that Travis, my teammate, will be able to see this information. Now this measurement reading, this log file, is not assigned to any assets, so I'm the only one that can view this particular measurement reading at this time. So again, we're in Riley Russell's account, that's my demo account here, but now we're looking at the assets tab instead of the measurements tab. We go to the assets tab, we go to the assets group called plant one, and I look at the asset that I just mentioned, P1 Chiller, and I can see all, if I go to the Save Data option, the sub-tab called Save Data, I can see all of the save data assigned to the P1 Chiller asset, including the T3000FC measurement reading I took, 78.8 degrees Fahrenheit. So I assigned this reading to the P1 Chiller asset, and I can obviously see this information in my account. But Travis can also see that information. Now, right now, we're looking at Travis's account. We're logged into his account, and we're looking at his measurements tab. You'll notice that he does not have any readings that say 78.8. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so because that was the measurement that I took as Riley. But if, if Travis goes to the assets tab, goes to the plant one asset group, looks at the asset called P1 Chiller, and selects the save data option, you'll see that he can see the T3000FC temperature reading that I took as Riley, 78.8. So teammates can in fact share data, can share their measurement data as long as they assign that information to an asset. The asset view enables teammates to share information. Hopefully that makes sense to everyone. Question number six, how do I assign another team administrator? Well, you would need to go to the team tab, whether it's in the web app or the mobile app, and there you can go in and assign a second team administrator. In this case, you'll see that I'm assigned as a team administrator and Steve Sampson is assigned as the second team administrator. This is another frequently asked question we hear, um, but it's usually after the original team administrator has left the team or the company. So as a standard practice, I strongly recommend that you take some time to identify a backup team administrator before this happens. So that if the first team administrator leaves, you'll have a backup person who still has access to all the information regarding the team, licenses, you know, and being able to invite new team members, et cetera. But don't worry if the primary team administrator Sorry about that, I have a little cough. If the primary team administrator leaves, you can always contact the support department and we can assist you with that. <clears throat> so in this scenario, I'm showing you how to assign a secondary team administrator using the web app. We go to the Teams tab in the web app and here you can see <clears throat> In this scenario, I'm the only team administrator, but I want to assign Steve Sampson as the team administrator, the backup team administrator. So in order to edit his profile, I click the pencil icon. You always click the pencil icon to edit. <clears throat> and I can select whether he's a standard user, which is what he is now, or an administrator. So I'll select the administrator option. I'll click the blue save button. And now you can see that Steve Sampson is also a team administrator, so we've got two team administrators. Now, another frequently asked question we get is how many team administrators can they be? Is there a limit? <clears throat> we used to have this set to two, but some of our larger corporate accounts wanted to have you know, 10 or 20 team administrators because they have multiple locations and wanted a, a team administrator for each location. So I don't think there's a limit at this time, so feel free to add as many team administrators as you want. Select wisely, of course, 
because this person does have access to assign licenses to the different team members, et cetera, so, and invite new team members. The other great thing about this is, is that once I assign Steve Sampson as a team administrator, he'll automatically receive an email notifying him of this change. Okay, question number seven. How do I change the default file path in Fluke Connect Desktop? Well, unfortunately, there is no way to change the default file path in Fluke Connect Desktop. This is a bit of a trick question, but we we literally just had this question yesterday. Um, I had this question come up from one of my teammates. So you'll see here under settings, desktop settings, the local file saving location, it's hard coded. Um, this little option is grayed out, so there is no way to change that. Question number eight, why is Fluke Connect Desktop not working? Well, these are the five most common reasons why Fluke Connect Desktop might not be working. Number one, verify you have administrator access on your PC to install and update the software. And <clears throat> the most frequent reason why it stops working, like you're unable to log in or the files aren't synced properly, is because you're not running the most up-to-date software. And just to point out, we just released a brand new version of Fluke Connect Desktop, version 1.1.548 today. So be sure to update your software. The new version of Fluke Connect Desktop now supports adding up to 150 measurements at a time to your reports. Before, there was a maximum of 100 measurements, and now we're up to 150 measurements. This was a frequently asked feature request, and the development team just added that option. So that's great news for everybody. Next. You want to verify your PC meets the minimum specifications required to run the software. Windows 10 operating system with a minimum of 16 gigabytes of RAM. We have had customers try to use an 8 gig RAM computer and they run into problems, performance problems. The system times out when it's trying to copy or move files. Number three, verify Fluke Connect Desktop has access to the following four DNS or URLs by disabling the company firewall on these four URLs. I know for a fact that if you haven't provided access to these four, the software will not work properly. So work with your IT department to provide access to those. Number four, verify Fluke Connect Desktop has access to the following on the PC, the public docs folder, this file, dbpath.dat, and the dmconfig.json file. And finally, verify the three Fluke Connect Desktop sync services are running. It's these three, three options here. Now, if you want more details or detailed instructions about how to find this information on your computer, you can contact the support department. We have a knowledge base article that's like three or four pages long, and it'll walk you through all the different troubleshooting steps, in addition to getting help from the support team themselves. Question number nine, when will my free one-year Fluke Connect Assets license expire? Well, this information is available in all three Fluke Connect apps, and here you can see it in the mobile app, the web app, and the desktop app. When you log into the Fluke Connect mobile app and you click the menu options, it'll be right here at the very top. It says how many days you have remaining in your trial license. If you click the profile icon here at the top, you'll see a big yellow box that tells you you have 325 days remaining in your Fluke Connect Assets trial. And same is true for the Fluke Connect Desktop. You click on the profile icon. <clears throat> and last but not least, question number 10, where can I get more help with the tool? Well, the best place to go is the Fluke website, fluke.com. And the steps you want to take is you want to go through and enter the tool model number in the search bar here. So in this case, I searched on the model number 376. And that brings up the different product pages available. I can simply click on the product page. And from there, I can see all the different information about this particular tool, including a product overview, specification information like data sheets that will tell you say the maximum number of you know volts available in the settings, um, the different models available, if they're alternate models, any uh, customer reviews, resources available, and accessories. Now under the resources tab, this is a great tab because it will provide you with information such as white sheets, user manuals, um, all different types of information. And um, it's important that I explain this because our team is the Fluke Connect technical support team. So our primary responsibility is to answer questions about the Fluke Connect software. 
However, we also receive hardware questions like how many readings can my 376 FC tool take or what is the highest voltage my meter can read? And we do the, our best to answer these questions by using, basically we just do what we recommend you do, which is look at the fluke.com website. We look up that information and find the answers for you. But if you have multiple questions or very detailed questions, we'll sometimes refer you to the fluke.com website or to the Fluke hardware support team. And this is their phone number, 800-443-5853, or you can email them directly at tech.support at fluke.com. Um, also, remember to search YouTube. There are a ton of helpful how-to videos out there, and not just from Fluke either. Lots of our customers make terrific videos and post them to share with others. Helpful how-to information, so please keep that in mind. Other Fluke Connect specific resources or information can be found here. If you want to go to the Fluke Connect website, go to fluke.com and then select products and then select Fluke Connect. If you want to see the video that I created today using this, uh, this presentation, you can go to the Fluke Connect workshop videos at fluke.com slash quick start and select the tile that says handheld tools. It will be the fourth tile over and then just scroll down a little bit and you'll see um, 30 different videos that we've created over the past couple of years. Uh, if you want more additional information about purchasing Fluke Connect products, you can contact our sales department at this phone number and this email address. And last but not least, if you have technical questions that you need to have answers or are having an issue, please contact us at Fluke Connect Support. Our phone number is 425-200-0080, or you can email us at Fluke connect support at fluke.com it's a long email address but it's very descriptive fluke connect support at fluke.com so that concludes the presentation portion of the fluke connect workshop in the next day or two you will all be receiving an email thanking you for attending it, it will include a link to the recording of this presentation and a link to register for the next fluke connect workshop in january also at the conclusion of this session you will be asked to provide feedback on the presentation in a short survey. Please take a moment to do so. We do review all of the uh, information you provide us and the scores that you provide us. I will be taking questions now. As a reminder, please keep questions to the topic we just covered. Give me a moment to stop the recording.